we'll do um, a quick overview of the site. Uh, there won't be much opportunity to delve in, in too much detail. Then I thought we could just look a little bit about uh, what achievements we've, we've had over the last 10 years. Then I'll uh, introduce you to some recent highlights of things that have recently added to the site. And then at the end, some future developments. So if we move on to the next slide. So My Primitive Methodists is one of five community archive websites within the Methodist heritage portfolio. So there's My Methodist History, My Wesleyan Methodists, My United Methodists, Wesley's Oxford and uh, My Primitive Methodists. It started off as My Primitive Methodist Ancestors and the vision was to have a one-stop shop for everything to do with primitive Methodism. And we started in 2012. Now it's, it's interesting how things happen uh, with time. My involvement resulted from a conversation between Jill Barber and my wife after a service that my wife attended. I must have been off preaching somewhere. Uh, and they got talking and um, it came to light that I had an interest in family history. Uh, and as a result of that conversation, which must have been February, March 2012, Jill invited me to become involved with this new project, My Primitive Methodist Ancestors. So we had a training course in May 2012 from Jack Latimer of Community Sites. And shortly after that, we began to put together some initial pages. Now, at that time, I was just giving up playing golf because I had a very dodgy hip uh, and had a hip operation. So I was convalescing watching Wimbledon, uh, the London Olympics, and sat there with Leary and some pictures that Jill had provided from some of the pictures of ministers from the, um, from the museum, starting to put together pages matching pictures of ministers with um, their stations in Leary. Uh, others were going around the country taking pictures of primitive Methodist chapels and various other things. And we cobbled together something like 50 to 60 pages by September 2012 and My Primitive Methodists went live. The name changed in 2018 to My Primitive Methodists when the software base was changed to WordPress. So if we now move on to the next slide, which is a screenshot hopefully of the six main sections of the site. So we'll go through each one um, in turn. Uh, people is one that I've been primarily involved with and others have, have, have chipped in with uh, other sections. So if we move on to look at people, um, We've split people down into lay people, primitive Methodist ministers, and then a series of submissions about family history. There's also a, a series of keywords. Where possible, I've attached keywords like Sunday school worker, um, uh, guardian, meaning guardian of the poor, or counsellor, which means that we can, if you click on those uh, keywords, you can pull up all the different entries associated with that. So if we move on to the next slide, I've shown one of our ministers, Edwin Dalton, who was a very distinguished primitive Methodist, uh, became president of conference. And I've shown this really to, to demonstrate what we've tried to do. Whilst we started off with just the picture and the entries in Leary, 
uh, we then tried to put a bit of flesh around that. So for this particular minister, I mentioned a bit about his early years, uh, talked about his ministry uh, based on information from articles in the Primitive Methodist magazine. If we then move on to the next slide, uh, we get down into his family. Now this is, this is the bit that really fascinates me because I'm really nosy and like to delve into people's uh, past history. So what I've tried to do is, is give information about a person's parents, who they married, if they married, and who their children were, and some indication of what occupation they had. And then for the uh, ministers, the list of circuits that we find in Leary. And then moving on to the next slide, uh, wherever possible, uh, we link all the, uh, the references that we've been able to pull up about that person. And then you see at the bottom the keywords. Uh, the keywords associated with this person were they were president, and you can see. Uh, at the time I took this screenshot, we had 75 of our presidents of, Meth of the Primitive Methodist Conference have pages on our site. And this person was also a member of a school board uh, back in the um, later years of the 19th century. So that's what we've tried to do with people. Just some acknowledgements. Uh, we have lists of all of the people who were primitive Methodist ministers and Philip Thornborough uh, spent a lot of time putting those lists together. We have uh, managed to create a page for all of the primitive Methodist traveling preachers that are listed in Yaleary as having served in the UK. And that's some 4,000 plus people. We've also got some information about missionaries and we've got over 2,000 or 2,500 pages about ordinary lay people. So that's, that's sort of the type of thing that we've got in with people. If we move on to chapels now. Uh, chapels is not my specialist subject and the website has been supported by some uh, very enthusiastic people around the community. Uh, Richard and Elaine Pierce, who put together this particular page, uh, did a lot of uh, traveling around taking pictures of primitive Methodist chapels or ex chapels. Uh, Chris Hill, who's with us. I think you came on board, Chris, when we borrowed the pictures from the Guyler collection uh, down at Oxford Brooks and Chris has put all of those up and done a lot of work on chapel openings. And if you scan through the pages, there are other names like Jeffrey Oxley, Tim Banks, and some others who have contributed information about chapels. I just put up some information on a couple of random chapels for you. This Lower Withington Primitive Methodist Chapel is an example of one uh, it's not far from Englesley Brook, it's in the neighbouring circuit, but it's been tastefully uh, converted into a dwelling. If we go to the next uh, one, right, this is Little Neston Primitive Methodist Chapel, which is uh, on the Wirral. Uh, and I put, put this in the talk purely for nostalgic reasons. Um, before moving into Nantwich, I lived in Ellesmere Port for 30 years, and I must have preached in this chapel uh, at least twice a year during those 30 years. Uh, but it was also the chapel that my parents went to in the last 10 years of their lives. So um, I also remember that chapel as having to speak uh, at both their funerals. So, um, it's always interesting when you when you're able to put something on the website or have something on the website with a personal connection. Um, I I could have pulled up a picture of my great grandfather, 
uh, and also some of my wife's relatives uh, from the northeast uh, are featured on the site. Very interesting when you, you find something in the Primitive Methodist magazine that relates to your own family. So if we move on in our overview from chapels, we move on to places. Uh, and quite often in either the Primitive Methodist magazine or in the Christian Messenger, you find an article about a place which gives you some history of the place, very often shows some pictures uh, of early chapels. So here, uh, a picture, uh, so a page on South Shields in County Durham. And if we go to the next slide, we find an article about Ellesmere Port. Now, as I said, I lived in Ellesmere Port for 30 years, and it wasn't until coming to do this with Englesey Brook that I actually learned a lot about the history of the primitive Methodist uh, movement in, in Ellesmere Port. Um, the chapel I went to was not an ex-prim, it was round the corner from where the main prim church was. So if we move on, um, we get into the area of topics. Now I could spend and talk an awful lot about all of these different areas and probably uh, you'd be well asleep by the time I've finished. But some of the, the main topics that we've covered over the last 10 years, we did quite a lot on the First World War, uh, both um, work on conscientious objectors and work on chaplain. And we also pulled out all the obituaries in the Primitive Methodist magazine of uh, soldiers who, who died in the war. They're all uh, under the First World War area. A another rich source of uh, Primitive Methodist history uh, came in articles that were printed in the magazine around the centenary of Primitive Methodism. We've also got quite a bit of information about governance, uh, training and education. And that's, we've also got lists of presidents, vice presidents and members of the deed poll. Uh, the deed poll was um, created a, a, a number of people who became permanent members of the Primitive Methodist Conference. Uh, but the, one of the early um, things was that that person had to have had many years of standing as a Primitive Methodist member, which meant that the, most of them were actually appointed as they were approaching their dotage and they didn't actually serve for many years. But it was a way, I think, of, of, of maintaining a certain amount of wisdom in the conference that would uh, be able to pull it back if it started to go uh, be too radical, perhaps. Um, there are some areas about overseas missions, and uh, we've also got some rather uh, interesting ones where people have given us pictures of place names or streets that have a connection uh, with primitive Methodism. Let's move on to the next section of the site, which is the objects on the site. As you can see there, the area which has the main number of objects are our circuit preaching plans, of which there are over 1400 on the site. Um, we have to greatly thank Doug and Pat Saville for the work they did on digitization of the plans. And then most of them were then put on the site by Ruth Parrott, which was a very thankless task that took an awful long time, uh, but they're there. Uh, I know we've, we've got a number of plans that have come in in the last 10 years that have not yet been digitized. So if anyone's looking for a little bit of a, a project on the side, uh, I'm sure we'd like to, to add to that. We move on to the next uh, slide, 
The final section on the site overview is the research links. Uh, I mean, this is part of trying to make the site a one-stop um, place for people coming to find out about primitive Methodism. So there's some links to uh, primitive Methodist magazines that are online, some links to uh, learned theses, um, various other bits and pieces of articles, links to uh, where there are books uh, online about primitive Methodism or other websites. So that's a, a very broad overview of what's on the site. So what have we achieved over 10 years? So if we move on. Okay, so the current status of the site is, is over the last 10 years, we've had 390 people who have registered as users of the site. That's people who have submitted information and actually given us their contact details. Over 14,300 posts or pages have been submitted. Uh, currently, there are just over 14,000 actually in the published list. We've had 5,400 plus comments on the pages. This, being a community archive website, one of the, the important things that we, we want to do is generate um, conversation with people about uh, some of the information. We don't know everything and people, other people can add their bits and pieces. And then in the calendar year 2021, over 82,000 people or users made over 105,000 visits to the site. So it is a site that is, is well visited, something like 250 to 300 hits per day on the site. And they're from people all over the world, mostly perhaps 75, 80% from the UK, 15 to 20% from the States, but we get people from Australia, New Zealand, um, all over Europe uh, have come across the website. So if we move on to the next slide, uh, just to blow our own trumpet back in 2014, we won an award for the best new community archive uh, as part of the community archives award. So there's a picture of Jill and myself proudly with the um, certificate uh, that picture was published in the Methodist Heritage News. Um, uh, it was probably the autumn of 2014. So if we move on, I think one of the achievements that we have made has been about bringing people together. And to illustrate that, uh, John Philipson, uh, Primitive Methodist Minister, uh, each year, his family produced a household annual with articles written by each member of the family. These uh, journals uh, seem to have then been distributed amongst the children of the family uh, in time uh, and have gone all over the world. We found one of these journals, and this is a page uh, from uh, the one in 1916, where John Phillips and himself is talking about the winter storms. This prompted, was found by other people across the world, people in Australia and South Africa, who also found that they had similar journals from different years. So, up until now, I think five of these uh, fascinating notebooks have been found. But what happened is we brought together through this, um, that is various descendants of the family uh, from across the world. So other um, pages have brought together people uh, who didn't particularly know each other uh, from families. So that's one of the achievements I think we've we've had as a site. If we move on to the next um, sense of achievement, um, 
it's been a way of promoting primitive Methodism and people coming out and telling us about various artifacts or books that they've, they've had. Um, perhaps the most uh, exciting was uh, a contact we had from a bookseller in the States who had a handwritten journal uh, of this minister, John Davison. Now, John Davison married William Clow's stepdaughter and he went out to Canada in 1847. And this journal um, described uh, what happened on his journey into Canada um, and, and so on. And Randall, who's here with us, uh, picked this up and he produced a very interesting little booklet uh, about this journal. But we have been offered all sorts of things, uh, lots of trowels from uh, laying of foundation stones, etc, etc. The next sort of uh, one is, is, if you go to the next slide, what I've just written on this one is a, a couple of comments that we received on pages about people. Now, one of my main objectives uh, is, is to actually try and help family historians uh, find out about people who are involved in, in primitive Methodism and, and try and help them to find out a little bit more about what their ancestors believed. Uh, this is just two examples of comments that have been received within the last month uh, that have been added to pages about people. So um, Sarah Randall's writes about uh, William Bruff Randall. Um, William Henry Mason, who she mentions there was a primitive Methodist uh, minister. Uh, and then uh, Alfreda, uh, the person uh, writing about Alfreda, uh, says that that was her great grandmother and she's so grateful for the information. Now that's, that's quite typical of some of the comments that we get uh, about people. We also get lots of comments about chapels, um, where they were, uh, very often, have we got the right picture? Um, someone's got a different view on, on where the actual chapel was. But as I said, we've got over 5,000 comments. So um, it is, there is a very vibrant community of people interested in, in primitive Methodism. So if we move on, uh, if we move on to some recent highlights, stuff that uh, has, has appeared on the website within the last three months. Um, first one is Our Struggle in London. In the, in the 1913 Primitive Methodist magazine, um, the minister called William Curry uh, put in a series of 12 articles that chronicles the history of Primitive Methodism in London, right from the point when Hugh Bourne and James Crawford made their initial sortie up into London in, in 1810 th through to how um, the capital was missioned if you like and the development of chapels right up to the mid 1870s. I found it a fascinating article with, with lots of uh, additional pictures of, of some of the chapels. Um, interestingly, that was that was laid out in a very chronological order. The following year in the 1914 magazine, um, we have a series of articles uh, by the Reverend Mantrip on how we won East Anglia. It's not so structured. It, it's a little bit um, repetitive in, in places, but there's some interesting anecdotes and some pictures of early Primitive Methodist chapels in East Anglia. If we move on to the, the next slide, another uh, interesting series of articles that I've, I've come across were written by um, Holiday Bickerstaff Kendall, who's obviously well known for his, his two volume history of primitive Methodism. But after the 
the vast number of centenary articles in the period 1907 to 1910 11. Um, he started to write an article each month, one page, about what was happening in the primitive Methodist movement 100 years before. So in 1912, January 1912, he's writing about what was happening in January 1812. And as I've developed those. There's, there's uh, 1912, 1913, 1914 are on the website. I know there are 1915 and 1916 uh, ready to uh, to be um, to be put on there in the coming months. But there's lots of interesting Arctic anecdotes. Um, I was very interested in one in in 18 March 1813. Hugh Bourne, James Steele, and um, Mr. McAvoy were tasked by that quarterly meeting to draft a code of rules for the regulation and discipline of the societies. So they set up a subgroup to do this, but by October, nothing much had been done. So the October quarterly meeting told them off, get on with it. So, uh, uh, Kendall records that uh, Hugh Bourne was put on his metal and a draft was produced for the January, uh, so that should be 1814 meeting, not 1914. Um, and, and really that set of rules remained more or less the same up until uh, the 1819 meeting, uh, pre-meeting uh, before the first Primitive Methodist Conference. So. Uh, these are things that, that I certainly hadn't appreciated uh, before getting involved with the, this sort of project. And if we move on to the next slide. That's it. I'm also surprised frequently by what I find out when uh, coming across obituaries of uh, some of our lay people. Uh, I'm sure we've all heard of uh, uh, Mr. Hartley, Sir William Pickles Hartley, who was a very uh, well known uh, manufacturer of jams and um, gave a lot of money to the Primitive Methodist Church. I came across recently this chap, William Batchelor, uh, and he was a counsellor, uh, very involved in the Primitive Methodist Church in uh, Sheffield. But then as I went into uh, his family history, I found that he was a pioneer in tinning food to preserve it. Uh, and he was actually the bachelor of bachelor's peas. So that was a, a quite a fascinating discovery uh, that someone who was basically, uh, you know, very involved as a primitive Methodist, very involved in his community, uh, developed this industry, uh, obviously living in Sheffield, had access to the steel cans, etc. cetera. Um, but interestingly, it was his daughter that went on to develop the business uh, into the nationwide business of bachelor's peas. So there are always surprises. So let's move on to the next slide. Future developments. It's still not a complete one shot stop for everything to do with primitive Methodism although I think it's probably one of the biggest community archive websites um, in, in, the, in the country. What we'll be doing, uh, I'm certainly planning to continue with obituaries, mainly of lay people and other interesting articles in, in 1913, 14 and onwards. Um, I'm currently, I've just completed lay people up to G, uh, in the obituaries for 1913. I'm sure we'll have continued development of the chapel section with help of the wider community. 
uh, this is the area we get most contributions and, and comments. The objects section of the site is quite thin. Um, I've mentioned the preaching plans, but I'm sure we could put more information up about um, objects that we have that are uh, of interest and tell something uh, of the primitive Methodist story. And then the last question is, you know, has anybody any suggestions of areas of, of the primitive Methodist story that we might want to, to move, um, move on uh, and add to the site uh, in the future? So I, I just throw that in uh, for, for you to think about, which takes us on to our final slide, which is really sort of a conclusion. So really, the website has been developed over the last 10 years to be one of the largest community websites. I think it's been very much a team effort uh, with contributions from the whole Anglesey Book family and the wider community. The fact that we get hits from all over the world shows that there really is a continuing history, uh, continuing interest uh, in our movement. And, and finally, I think the current day church has much um, that can be learned from the heritage that we've, we've inherited uh, from our Methodist forebears. So I think that, that sort of concludes what I wanted to say. Oh, just, just one point I missed. In the, the East, the, related to this, what we can learn, um, the East Anglia uh, series, a quote from Article 3, it talked about the preachers of the primitive Methodists going to those who needed them. And that was at the heart of why they were successful. In towns, a few people of higher social standing were arrested by the preacher's earnestness. And in rural districts, the village shopkeeper or some farmer would be one. But in general, our work was among the common people, the poor and those who had no helper. I think that was the foundation of the primitive Methodist movement being successful in East Anglia and elsewhere. And I think it's something that we could very well take heed of today.